Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, fall is in the air, and the new season officially begins on the evening of September 22nd. Now, with that change in the weather, we've also got a change in the sky. We're going to be bidding adieu to some of the sights of summer, and we'll be seeing some of those fall constellations and stars begin to take over. Now, as always, we're going to be focusing primarily on the mid-northern latitudes and what's visible from there, although quite a bit of the sky is visible from the southern hemisphere as well. We'll also be focusing especially on things that are visible from a light polluted sky like Chicago and other major cities. You might think there's nothing to be found, but I think you'll be surprised at just what's visible in the sky. Now, if you have questions about when and where to look for something from your particular location, definitely leave a comment and we'll be happy to help you out. So let's step outside about two hours past sunset on an evening in late September. We're going to begin looking northwest for a bright star that's on its way out of the sky called Arcturus. It's part of Boötes the Herdsman. Arcturus is shining bright in the west, and you can confirm it's Arcturus by using the handle of the Big Dipper. That nice arc shape that it makes, just continue that line and arc to Arcturus. Definitely catch Arcturus as soon as you can, though. By late October or so, it's going to be getting pretty tough to catch in the evening twilight. Now, from the northwest, turn your gaze to the southwest, and here you'll be catching the last glimpses of some iconic summer zodiac constellations, Scorpius the Scorpion and Sagittarius the Archer. Scorpius is marked by the bright star Antares, the heart of the Scorpion. Sagittarius will be a little higher in the sky, and depending on how dark your sky is, you can trace out a teapot shape. Now, in between Scorpius and Sagittarius is a beautiful section of the Milky Way, but you will need a dark sky and a moonless night to see it like it's meant to be seen. This beautiful band of light, which is our galaxy seen from the inside, is an amazing sight at this time of the year, stretching from southwest to northeast across the top of the sky. Let's turn our gaze now to the southeast, and we'll be spotting here two objects a little bit closer to home, the planets Saturn and Jupiter. Saturn was at its closest to Earth for the year back in August, and Jupiter will reach its closest position to Earth on September 26th. Now, Jupiter is currently the brightest point of light in the sky. It's impossible to miss, so definitely give it a look this fall. Jupiter is currently in the constellation of Pisces the Fish, and your best views through binoculars or a telescope will be when it's higher over the horizon, more towards the middle of the night. But even earlier than that, you can get a pretty good view. Steadily held binoculars are going to show you the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. And with even a small backyard telescope, you can begin to see some detail of the planet itself, the cloud bands, and maybe even the great red spot if it's facing the Earth when you're looking. Saturn is well placed a little bit earlier in the night for the best views in the constellation of Capricornus, though it is dimmer, farther away, and also lower in the sky at its best. Still, a small telescope should show you the rings of Saturn, a beautiful three-dimensional view even with backyard scopes. Now, these two planets will be visible in the evening sky really for the rest of the year, but you do want to catch them now through a telescope because each night they're going to be getting farther and farther away. And while you're in this part of the sky, you might also notice the lonely star Fomalo. It's the only reasonably bright star in this part of the sky in the constellation of Pisces Austrinus, the southern fish. Turning our gaze towards the northeast, we now see the true fall constellations making their debut in the sky. The centerpiece is the zigzag W shape of Cassiopeia the Queen. She is about halfway up in the sky at this hour, joined by her husband Cepheus the King, her daughter Andromeda the Princess, and son-in-law Perseus the Hero. If you're in a dark enough sky, you can spot another galaxy in this part of the sky. The Andromeda Galaxy will appear as a faint smudge of light to the naked eye. A little bit higher up and straight east is another fall constellation, Pegasus, the flying horse, marked by a nice bright square of stars. Another bright shape to look for, this one straight up in the sky a couple hours past sunset, is the Summer Triangle. The three bright stars in the Summer Triangle, Deneb, Vega, and Altair, they're all part of different constellations. Deneb is part of Cygnus the Swan, Vega is part of Lyra the Harp, and Altair is part of Aquila the Eagle. Now, this beautiful bright pattern of stars has really been dominating the top of the sky over the past month or so. But here as we move into the fall and even into the winter, it'll remain visible, but it'll be fading off into the west as the fall sky takes over. The moon is on the move as well, with a beautiful first quarter moon visible on the night of October 2nd, a beautiful full hunter's moon rising on October 9th, and it'll be beautifully paired with the star Antares in Scorpius on September 30th. 
On October 8th, the day before the full moon, you'll find it right near the brilliant planet Jupiter in the sky as they rise. Now, as the phases of the moon change, it's a beautiful thing to see with your eyes, but make sure if you have the equipment to use binoculars or a telescope to check it out as well. There's always something new to see on the surface as the phases change, and you might be surprised just how much detail you can catch with modest equipment. So get out there early this fall and see all that the night sky has to offer. There's a little bit of everything at this time of the year, so get out there and look up. That's all we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.